We like our walks, don't we? Couples understand what it means to lean on each other, especially during life's heartaches. I think that life hands you different challenges in order to prepare you for other ones. Kenton and Tanya Lear know all about challenges and getting through them together. Relationships really make life worth living, I think. First, there is Tanya's sudden hearing loss, the surgery to restore it, not without risks. I had to decide whether I wanted to hear or possibly lose my taste. She had the operation, but did lose taste on one side of her mouth. The air that I'm breathing in impacts my taste, so I can taste metal on this side. For Tanya, the loss was profound. Like Kenton, she was working in the culinary world, but without an ability to taste, would have to change careers. And then... I was also diagnosed with cancer. That same year, more health issues. They found a very large tumor in my chest that had been there for... for a long time. <laughs> Tanya went through chemotherapy for lymphoma. Kenton and his two daughters, her rocks. I was so thankful to have him in my life and to have those girls in my life. And when the cancer was gone, Kenton was again right there to welcome Tanya's news. I'm cancer free, it's <laughs> like not even a trace. The couple began making plans for their next chapter, a wedding, unaware that Kenton would soon be leaning on Tanya. The incident when I look back now is like a bad dream. After getting their wedding ring sized, Tanya dropped Kenton off at the NAC, where he's worked as executive chef for seven years. I needed to come back uh, to pick up my keys and my car was in the, in the parking lot downstairs. So dropped me off here. She was going home to make dinner for us. I said, I'll, I'll see you at home in an hour. But once inside, another chef told Kenton there was smoke coming from a nearby dryer where staff launders uniforms and linens. Kenton called the fire department. At that point, I thought, I'll just grab the fire extinguisher and see if I can put it out myself. The toxic smoke billowing from the dryer would take its toll. And all of a sudden, I just started feeling faint. And that's the last thing I remember. Tanya, meanwhile, had for hours been unable to reach Kenton. And then I start to get Facebook messages. Kenton has been in an accident. There was a fire. There was a fire. Yeah, it was hard, it was a hard day. Nelson Borges, the GM of food and beverage at the NAC, has been friends and colleagues with Kenton for two decades. Still remembers getting the call about the accident. To hear the voices on the other side and how panicked they were, kind of um, gave me a sense of um, how bad it was. Kenton had collapsed, gone into cardiac arrest. He had died for a period of, I think they'd said six minutes. But quick thinking kitchen staff made the difference. They were there when I needed them the most. Guiding firefighters through the massive building to Kenton's location. Another grabbed a defibrillator from security, firefighters using it to shock Kenton. Twice. If those things hadn't happened right at the right moment, I wouldn't be here. There's a lot of people that clearly cared about Kenton and, uh, and it showed on a day like that. And none more so than Tanya, who rushed to hospital. And there's a curtain and there's his foot. And it was black from the soot. And I thought, surely that's not Kenton. It was really tough. Waking the next day in ICU, Kenton had no memory of the accident or Tanya's visit. A nurse explaining to him what had happened. So I was like, oh my God, like, I can't believe that I've been through this. That's when he called Tanya, knowing how traumatic it must have been. I was so afraid that I lost him, and there he was on the phone, just normal. <laughs> but shortly after his release, doctors called Kenton with concerns about the cause of his cardiac arrests. We realized they've released you, but we wanted to see you before you left, and we didn't get a chance because we can't explain why your heart stopped like the way it did. An angiogram at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute would reveal the reason. 
four major blockages in my arteries. One was 100%. My heart had actually made two uh, veins to reroute the blood to go around the blockages, uh, and that's how I was surviving. Kenton would need a quadruple bypass surgery, but two blood clots in his lungs caused by smoke inhalation meant the operation would have to wait. So Kenton made a request. Like, am I still gonna be able to have a wedding? With a pacemaker defibrillator implanted, doctors gave the green light. We'll schedule your surgery in three months. Uh, good luck with your wedding. <laughs> and Kenton and Tanya said I do. We had the most magical day. It was life and death. It was life and death. And when you're in life and death, life seems so bright, filled with kindness and appreciation and, and love. Just. And months later, instead of a honeymoon, Kenton had his successful surgery. I'm extremely grateful. I tell everybody how lucky we are living in this city to have a world-renowned heart hospital. A fairy tale ending to what began as a tragic tale. What almost killed him actually saved him. Um, because if that wouldn't have happened to him, he wouldn't have found out about the blockages that he had. So in, in hindsight, it was a miracle. Miracle workers who keep loved ones together. People at the Heart Institute are saving lives and they're reuniting families. Because Kenton is my life. I don't know what I, I would have done without him. I came very close to finding out and they gave him back to me.